this is Ginger from My Sister Scrapper. Today I am going to share with you a tutorial um, that several people ask, and not just on this one, but some other projects as well, and I'm slowly working on them, on how I created this really easy little dad, handyman dad, folio for Father's Day. So it's small, similar to my waterfall folio that I did for Graphic 45, but this one measures four and a half by six and a half and this is using the super cute little Echo Park Team Dad paper. You have two pockets here and then you have your waterfall mechanism right here. So that's what I'm going to show you how to create and I'm not going to use Father's Day paper because I've already made my Father's Day project so but it's the same exact concept. I'm just going to use some papers from this cute little doodle bug under the sea collection that I had left. So the measurements are, here we go, for your front and back covers I'm going to use medium weight chipboard. Those are going to measure four and a half by six and a half. So you're going to need two of those. One and two. So two that are four and a half by six and a half. And then our spine piece is going to be one inch by four and a half. So it's going to go like this, this, and this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some design paper to wrap my um, pieces of chipboard. So I went ahead just to save some time and I put some score tape around the perimeter of my front and back covers. And I'm going to use this cute little purple paper here, like this. So I went ahead and scored three quarters of an inch on this one side, the long side, and the short, one short side and one long side. And I'm going to get my bone folder here, burnish my tape. Pull the backing off. And I'm going to fill in the center of this just using my ATG gun. Now, what I want to do is I want to do it like I did this one. So I have an overlap of my um, paper that was going to wrap from my spine piece onto the front and the back. Uh, obviously on this one I use duct tape, which I won't use on this because I'm going to use some cute design paper, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just wrap three sides of the front and the back. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So I've scored here and I have scored where? On the bottom. Okay, I want to make sure I got my shells going the right way. So yes. So I'm going to put this piece flush against here and even with this. And I'm going to stick it down. Okay, I'm going to do the same to the other piece. So I want to make sure I got these going the right way. This is going to go this way, and this will go this way. So there we go. Again, tape around the perimeter, and I'm going to fill in the center with my ATG gun. Or you can use wet glue. You can use whatever adhesive you prefer. Adhesive is a personal choice. So you use your favorite. Okay, so I'm going to put this down right here. Just like that. Okay, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these over and I'm going to wrap. Now, a lot of times, um, I did learn this little trick, and I learned it from watching somebody else on YouTube, and also um, uh, and from Anna's Paper Creations. She's absolutely darling, but she takes like a damp little sponge or a damp cloth and goes around the sides here and just moistens her paper before she folds it over, and it prevents her paper from tearing. So that's what I'm going to do, but I am going to run my... Um, bone folder just really quick around here just to help it fold a little bit more before I get my little damp sponge or damp paper towel or whatever. So I'm just going to use a little sponge here and just go right around these edges. Oops, not that edge because there's nothing to wrap, but these three edges. And gently just fold over my paper, like so. And that helps your paper to not want to tear. I know, oh my God, isn't that brilliant? She's brilliant, I swear that woman is amazing. So, how cool is that? So now let's do the same to this piece here. I think it's wet enough. Okay. And again, I'm just going to take my bone holder. Just help it while it's a little moist. To train those fibers to go over that way. All right, perfect. Now we are going to put our score tape on. So I'm going to grab my score tape here and here we go. So I'm going to put tape the outside here and since I'm using a wider tape I think it's good enough just to put it on the paper like this and again I like to put my tape on before I trim my corners but that's just me that doesn't mean that's the only way to do it or the right way to do it that's just the way I like to do it my tape really good. And Matt must have had some vintage photo ink on it. Okay, now I'm going to get my scissors and trim my corners. Just like so. And take the tape backing up. And these little things should want to fold over because we trained them already. Now I'm just going to tuck in my corners. Oopsie. I got that one a little wonky. There we go. Okay, there's the first one. Super cute. And look, it didn't crack on my corners. Love it. Okay, let's do the same thing to this side here. Okay, now I'm going to fold in my corners. Okay, so now we have our front and back cover ready. Now we're going to do our little spine piece. So here's my little spine, and the way I'm going to do this, I went ahead and added my tape to the back. 
So for your spine piece, you can just determine how much of an overlap you want hanging. So you have your spine here, how much of an overlap you want here. I think on this one I did like an inch and a quarter. I wanted it to be equal, but clearly I didn't. I did it like an inch on both sides. So you would need one, two, three, plus your space between. So, you know, three and a half is what I would make my piece of paper to wrap. But you can use duct tape, you can use washi tape, you can use whatever you want to do. What I opted to do was use white. And then I went ahead and wanted to do like a decorative border. So I used this cute little Martha Stewart punch and punched a border edge on both sides. And I also, before I punched my edges, I ran a piece of score tape on both sides and then I punched. That way I have adhesive on these little holes that are cut out right here. So here we go. We're going to take this and we are going to center our spine in between here. And I think maybe it'll work better if I do it this way. Yes, so I'm going to take my backing off. Okay, so I want to allow for three quarters of an inch. Let's see. Find my center here. It should be right there, I think. No. There. And that doesn't look. Right, let's do it this way. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we've got that stuck down. Now we're going to go ahead and put our score tape on the top of this, I think I'll use the half inch. So this is my one panel. I'm going to run it right across like this. Oopsie. And same with this one. Okay, now this is I think my front and this is my back. So my back's going to go here and my front's going to go here. So if you are using, whoopsie, my back's going to go. This is my front. This is my front here. This way. Okay, because it's going to fold over this way. Right, right. Oh, see? It's it confusing. So I'm going to turn mine this way. And I'm going to take the backing off of here. And I'm going to take the backing off of this little cut piece. That worked out great. And I'm going to put this on here like this. And I want to leave a space. So that looks pretty good right there. And same with the back piece. I'm going to take this off. Okay, now we're going to put this piece down just like that. Now you can measure it if you want. I clearly am an eyeballer here, so that's what I'm going to do. So go ahead and stick it down like that. Okay, now we're going to fold these little pieces over. Oopsie. Fold these little pieces over. I got that a little short, but that's okay. All right, so now we're going to put tape on this. And a little bit of tape on here. I'm going to put it on the inside of this. Okay. Pull this off, stick that piece down, put 
pull that off. And ooh, stick that piece down. Ooh, that was close. But it's all good. Okay, I'm going to fold these in like this. There we go. And there's our cover. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, so now we need to put a piece of paper right here. Like this. So I'm going to use this. Now obviously this is bigger than 12 by 12, 12 inches. So I'm going to just go ahead and piece mine. You don't have to, you can do separate pieces, but we do need to cover up the space right here. So in our original folio, we have two pockets here. So that's why I'm okay with seaming this because my pocket's going to cover up my seam. So I'm going to put this piece here and then this piece right here that's not upside down. <laughs> and then I'm going to put this piece on. So there we go. And I trimmed this piece to four and a quarter by 12 and then just a small piece to cover up this section. And I made, this is like two and a half inches by four and a quarter. So I think what I'll do is I will put the small piece on first and then I'll put the big one on. Do I want to do that way? So I'm going to center it left to right, top to bottom. I think. Yep. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to put score tape on the back of this. Well, that's really cute too, huh? Now I'm going to use the fish. Or the side. Ah! Decisions, decisions. Okay, so I'm going to run my score tape down here like this. Now, obviously, if you wanted to ink your edges, you would do that now, but this is such bright, happy little doodle bug paper that I'm not going to ink anything. on this piece as well. Sometimes the half inch doesn't want to tear very good, so I'm going to trim it off so it doesn't rip my paper. <laughs> the big piece down first and then the little one on top. I know I've probably changed my, my mind three four times but that's what I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the backing off of my score tape here and then fill in the center with my ATG gun. cover back in here and just like this. Make sure my fishes are going the right way. They're not swimming upside down. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in here just like that. There we go. And burnish it really good with the bone folder. Okay, and I'm going to find my score marks again, really gently. There we go. Oopsie, got ink on that. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to add this little piece here to cover that little section up. Cuteness. Again, I want to make sure my fish aren't swimming upside down. They're going this way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Again, my pocket's going to cover up my seam, so I'm okay with that. And burnish it. 
there we go. Super cute. Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, now we're going to make our two pockets. I'm going to use white cardstock and then mat my pockets. So for the first pocket, which is the one on the bottom, you're going to cut a piece of cardstock to measure five by three and a quarter, and you're going to score half an inch on three sides, and then obviously trim your corners to make your pocket. We're going to stick it down. And on the second pocket, you're going to need a piece that's five by two and three quarters, and you're only going to score on the two short sides half an inch because what we're going to do is we're going to put this down here like this and then this will be folded in and then we're going to slide this pocket into here that way it looks like you can put larger tags at the top so it's going to go just like oopsie that yay there we go just like that so I've got my pieces cut and I'm going to go ahead and get my scoreboard out and score my pieces. So on the larger one, the one that measures five by three and a quarter, we're going to score at half an inch, which is easier for me to score on this side. So that would be four and a half, two and three quarters, and four and a half. And on the smaller piece, we're just going to do a half an inch on both sides. So again, four and a half and four and a half. Okay. Hold on our score lines. my mat. It's kind of, kind, of, kind of grungy looking here. Paint and blue and everything else. Oh my. Okay. So I'm going to get my score tape out. Again, I'm using the 3 8 of an inch. I'm going to put my score tape on my tabs. here and same with these and I'm gonna put my tape on this I'm gonna trim that down and trim that one down and then I want to stick this down a little bit in here so I'm gonna just again you can mark it with a pencil if you want but I'm just gonna eyeball it so that looks good to me <laughs> and that looks good to me just so it'll sit down in there and be like this I need to trim this one a little bit more it's a little uneven And I'm going to wipe those off, like so. Okay, let's bring our little book back in here. And again, I'm putting my pockets on this top portion here. So I'm going to take the backing off my tape. Oopsie. Oh, very good. Okay. And let's see, in the original one, I put it like, you know, I evenly spaced it top to bottom, left to right, so it's not it's not on the fold, but it's about a quarter of an inch or something like that. Up from the bottom. So there's my seam. I think I'm gonna put it right there. I'm liking that. Now this piece is going to slide right in there like that. Just like that. Oh my gosh. Cuteness. 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 Let's 
project actually goes together pretty quickly. It takes just as long to cut all your papers as it does to put it together. All right, so here we go. I want to stick that puppy in there. And stick it down. Cute, 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 cute. There we go. So there's our pockets for that. Now we're going to do the waterfall. And again, I'll have my design paper here to go on here. Okay, so for my waterfall piece, let's see, where are my measurements for the waterfall piece? Okay, the base piece, because I do like to make a base piece, and I know I have people ask, why do you do that? It's only so I can keep my waterfall mechanism straight. I have a tendency to get a little crooked sometimes and this just helps me do that. So my base piece is four by six and I'm going to have four flaps that are going to be four by four and a quarter and we're going to score all of these at four inches. So again I've got my base piece cut right here and these are my waterfall pieces. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard again and these are four by four and a quarter going to put them, or four by four and a half, excuse me, four by four and a half, put them in here at the four and a half mark and score them at four inches. Do that to all four of your pieces. And one more. Oops. So I'm going to get my base piece out and I'm going to, I think I'll just use my ATG gun. Nope, I'm not because I'm almost out. Okay, here we go. off my tape and the only reason why I'm using score tape on this is because my ATG gun is about empty of course it's not the way it is and I'll fill the middle one. okay I'm gonna get this in here again and again I'm gonna center this now if you want you can round your corners and do a little decorative edge. Um, I would do it on the bottom. In fact, I probably should have done that before I took my tape off. Uh, yep, let's do that. So that's okay, we'll just, you know, improvise. We'll put our tape backing back on here and punch our corners. Oh, this. I'm going to get my corner rounder and round my corners. And I'm going to use this little scallop one right here. So I'm going to stick that in there. See, there's always a way to fix it. Stick that in there. <laughs> now I can take this off. Oh, see? And now that's going to be cuter because it is a cute little girl thing. So I'm going to stick this down here like this. There we go. Now again, this just serves as the base for our waterfall plus this bottom portion is going to be our last little photo mat of the waterfall. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and punch the bottom corners of my four pieces using the same scallop punch. Okay, 
Now I can add my tape to my flaps, and then we're almost done. And all that's left is adding our design paper to our flaps if we want, and decorating the front cover. I like to start at the top and work my way down. I'm going to take the backing off my first piece like this. And I'm going to scoot this closer to me so I don't get my head in the camera. <laughs> and line it up with my base, the folded edge right along the top. Just like so. Okay, there's our first one. Pull it up and add the next one. The next one's going to go right against the edge of that one. Again, let's get a little closer, so I'll try not to get my head in the camera. There's our waterfall pieces. Cuteness. And then in between this space, you can add design paper or washi tape. And that's our bottom one. So now we have a pocket here. And it will go all the way down because we just inserted this top pocket into this bottom one. So you can put a larger tag in there and then a smaller tag in this one. And again, you can decorate this and you get your waterfall pieces and then just decorate the front cover. So there you have it, everybody. That's my quick little tutorial on how I created the little Father's Day miniature version of the waterfall folio. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Bye.